Hi, John Wright here again from Wilcom. This morning I'm at beautiful Judd's Lagoon a few hours west of here. A beautiful spot to camp for the weekend. I hope you're all doing well in our coronavirus uh, crisis here and uh, I hope you're enjoying your embroidery and these videos. Don't forget, please send me a photograph of your workplace or a, a beaut spot where you live. I'd love to include it in our videos. Okay, so we're stepping into the last of our series on motifs. We've already done motive stamps, motive runs, motive columns. Now we're looking at motive fills. So this design contained all three of them. So let's step right into it and we'll open up a new design. Okay, so we first of all have to select a fill tool to create our shape. So I'll just create a circle with our complex fill tool and it's by default filled with tatami stitch for me. So to fill it with, the, with uh, motive fill, simply select the item and select from your uh, fills toolbar, motive fills. So the properties of the motive fills should be familiar to you by now because they're the same motives that we've used in all of the other applications. So just to review that, we can choose from a whole range of different settings and different designs in the motive library. Let's take a closer look at our properties here now. So again we can change our size as we've been able to do in previous exercises. So we've got 24 there, let's make it 35 and you can see it'll proportionally make the motive larger because proportionally because the little lock is closed. If I unlock that I can change the Y shape of it as well. So I'll do that right now just to we won't change it by too much but sort of 10 millimeters and you can see it'll uh, make the motive higher in the y-axis. You could add a second motive and so we've got a black a black work motive in between the rows of leaves. I'll just close that down now it might make it simpler to explain the next step. So here we can change our spacing, our column spacing. So the motives are a little closer together. We can change our row spacing and push them further apart. We can rotate the design in the shape. And if we turn off fit, that uh, that's a motive that was created and we're forcing it to fit to the shape by using this button here. Let's go further back up here and that we've got a layout button here. I really like this. You'll notice when I click the layout button, there is a symbol. There are symbols of the motives appear in blue on the screen. Now the bottom left one will allow you to change the size of the motive. The top one will allow you to change the row spacing and also move along the row. And the right one will allow you to change the spacing in the rows. I'll hit enter to confirm and you can see the new pattern. So go back to the layout. I'll make make it larger. Hit enter to confirm. Layout. And you can see that this one is offset to the one below it and the ones above it. Come back to layout and I'll push this one back across so it's straight ab above the one below. And hit enter to confirm. So I think you get the idea there. So while we're here, there's another really neat effect that you can apply to motives, and that is the 3D effect. So you can select it by simply clicking on the icon in the uh, Stitch Effects toolbar, and have, it'll bring you up to the Properties dialog box, and you can turn the 3D warp on or off, and you can make it globe in or out, in or out, and you can also apply some perspective to it. So to apply this perspective, once you've selected it, your reshape tool and drag it out to change the perspective of the 3D. Okay, I'll come back and change it to globe out. And in the same way with the reshaping tool, we can change the shape of the globe out. 
just push it in and you can see it globes that section of the of the design okay let's just step back we'll go back to no globe out now I'm going to duplicate the object so control D to duplicate so I've got two of them I'm going to hold the shift key down and drag the second one in so it's sitting on top it's stitching later now I what I want to do is use the shape as a cutting tool but you cannot use a, a motif fill as a cutting tool so I'm just temporarily going to change it back to a tatami stitch under the arrange menu remove overlaps and I'm not I'm going to reduce the cutting overlap to, to zero and okay now it's going to cut a hole in the in the first one so we've got a donut shape there now we can convert this one back to a motive fill and choose a different pattern so I'll go to uh, let's say nature and we'll apply a globe in to it so I think you can see you can make some pretty funky designs if you want to that's uh, just using the globe out feature and attaching it to or overlaying it on a motif fill so even after doing all of this we can still come back to our our motive properties and change the motive so I hope this has helped thanks for watching and I look forward to receiving your pictures and comments